Howdy. Yesterday, I put up a YouTube video regarding what you should and shouldn't spend wish tokens on, a new limited currency that Bungie just added into D2 while we wait for the final shape. And between yesterday and today, I'd actually like to change my tune and correct myself on one thing on yesterday's video. Okay, fine. Two things. First up, I'd recommend to D2 players not spending their wish tokens on buying exotic armor. And the reason I mentioned that is Vex incursion events are still a thing and completing those literally give you a guarantee exotic armor on a knockout system, meaning you'll probably get what you don't yet have. Therefore, most people shouldn't spend wish tokens on exotic armor because they can use Vex incursion to get everything that they're missing. I still stand by that statement, but I have new info I spent last night fact checking. Shout out to my buddy Jason for the help. Really appreciate it. As it turns out, even if you don't own the Lightfall expansion, even if you're a 100% free to play player, you can still use wish tokens to buy and use Lightfall exotic armor, which is actually kind of nice and something I wasn't really expecting from Bungie. Important PSA though, even if you try to use wish tokens to get exotic armor as a free player, remember you maybe shouldn't buy everything. To give a quick example, after helping my buddy grind out the quest on his free to play account in order to help him earn a wish token, he went to grab the Sir Arachne's facade just to see if he was able to buy it. And after he did, we quickly realized we'd completely effed up because now he has an exotic helmet that only works with Strand, aka a subclass he can't use or even unlock because he hasn't purchased Lightfall. But the point is, even if you don't own Lightfall, you still can use wish tokens to get exotic armor pieces that you probably don't have. And that actually changes a fair amount. Obviously, you don't want to do what me and my buddy did and get an exotic that you can't use because the corresponding subclass is still behind a paywall. But there are other options on the list that would benefit people who haven't bought Lightfall. The biggest ones that come to my mind are the Pyrogale Gauntlets, the Cenotaph Mask, and the Briar Binds. Uh, sorry, Hunters. Pyrogale should be pretty straightforward. As the vast majority of Titan mains will tell you, Pyrogale lets you dish out laughably high burst damage really quickly. It's very much become a go-to staple in PvE, and the fact that you really don't need to use your brain at all to take advantage of the big damage is quite nice. And because Solar is part of the base D2 Titan kit, if you're a Titan main who doesn't own Lightfall, this is your moment. Go get a wish token and wish for free damage in the form of Pyrogale if you don't have it yet. For all the floof and warlock bros out there, even those who voted for Shadow Wizard Money Gang, who I still haven't forgiven, by the way, goddamn pointy shoes, if you don't own Lightfall, you should 100% get a token and get the Briar Binds. Again, Void is part of the base D2 warlock kit, and as mentioned, the Briars are very good in PvE content as they allow borderline permanent Void Child spam. Even if your little Void buddy eventually disappears, you'll probably have your Rift energy back by then and can just summon another one. This is probably one of my top three most used Warlock builds these days, the other two being Strand with Osteostriga and being the designated Radiant Well bitch. Final exotic option that leaps out to me for things that are really desirable to drop a token on would be Cenotaph, but not for 100% free to play Destiny players though, rather those in a really weird vein who didn't spend money on Lightfall but did spend money on Shadowkeep. Basically, if you don't own Lightfall, but you do own a Divinity, you really owe it to yourself to drop a wish token on the Seno if you don't have that armor. You definitely won't win any beauty contests, but you'll be everybody's best friend in endgame PvE content. Straight up, Cenotaph is one of the reasons I have a day one contest mode Crota raid emblem. Big shout out to that armor. Again, sorry hunters, there's not a lot here I would hard recommend you drop a wish token on in the exotic armor department. Maybe you could go with Speedloader slash but honestly, I think other exotic options outshine most of what hunters could buy with a wish token. Moving on to briefly recap my other wish token recommendations. Yeah, you can spend them on deep sight last wish raid weapons. I'd say that's probably the most enticing choice and the one most players will go for. But I'm gonna say it again before you do that, definitely try to use the new in-game LFG feature to farm the Kali encounter when last wish is the featured raid. You can get a ton of deep sight drops from doing that and it's really fast. 
fast. You can also solo farm Last Wish Raid loot every week, which apparently can get you deep side drops. I have videos on doing both of those things. I will link both below. Some people got a little tight that I recommended not spending wish tokens on Last Wish Raid weapons because there are farming methods. And I mean, you do you, boo, but goddamn, I'm just trying to look out. For the record, we only get six of these goddamn tokens between now and the final shape. We're not exactly swimming in this currency, but I do admit buying a deep side apex predator with them tokens is totally understandable if you don't have the time or patience for last wish loot farming. Totally valid and what most people will probably do, and I really can't blame them. All right, let's go over the giant half-naked cabal in the room. In my video yesterday, I said waking vigil instead of nation of beasts. Thanks to the nine trillion people who pointed that out in the comment section, he said with a barely hidden and defeated tone. But no, really though, that is my bad. I didn't catch that when I was writing the script late the night before, and in a pure pro gamer move moment, I published that video to YouTube while I was streaming on Twitch Tuesday after reset. My lovely editor sent me the finished video and admittedly, I very stupidly didn't review it because I was live at the time and didn't want to cannibalize views. Smart. Which, by the way, I can only laugh. That sweetheart that she is, my editor tried to apologize to me for also not catching it, which is 100% not her job, by the way. It's completely all on my dumbass to catch stuff like that. Anyway, let's revisit that last wish loot real quick, shall we? The number one choice, obviously, remains Apex Predator, which is the golden Gallarhorn pairing in PvE content. After that, it's up to you. The Techie Infusion Rifle completely melts people in PvP, although I would really only recommend that if you're a controller player. Fusion Rifles on mouse and keyboard really miss out on reticle friction. Nation of Beasts, first try, nailed it, is a great hand cannon for PvE because why else? Volt Shot. Go ahead and pair that together with Dragonfly for extra funny ad clear. Hard recommend for activities with an arc surge, by the way. Supremacy can also put in work in both PvE and PvP. For PvP, that would easily be Snapshot and Opening Shot for me, especially if you dig snipers with a base 40 zoom. For PvE, there's a couple things you can fiddle with, but I recommend playing it safe and going with Rewind Rounds and still definitely not overpowered Bait and Switch. That's a really fun combo you should try out, even if you're not normally into snipers and PvE. Continuing on with my condensed wish token recommendations, I still recommend not buying shards or alloys. I just think with Raul around, why bother? But again, you do you. To echo yesterday, ciphers definitely can be worth the buy depending on what exotic weapons you as a player still don't have. The Monument to Lost Lights at the tower will sell you old exotics directly if you still need to unlock them, but be warned, you may need to buy certain content packs in order to use them. My recommendations on those exotics from the other day has not changed. Sleeper Simulant, Legend of Acrius, Lumina, Izanagi's Burden, Levy's Breath, and Wither Horde are my hard PvE recommendations from that kiosk, while Ace of Spades and Thorn are my hard PvP recommendations. You could maybe also get away with justifying buying the last word for PvP, but only if you're a controller player and only if Bungie decides to keep nerfing SMGs in PvP in the future, because right now bringing the last word into an SMG meta is like bringing piss to a shit. Fight. That leaves us with just mementos, and I meant what I said the other day. If you're a veteran player who has all your exotics, you got everything crafted, or have a raid team to farm last wish with, and you got plenty of shards and alloys, fuck it, dude. Buy mementos. They're unavailable for most of the year, and they look badass. But if you don't care about Destiny, I've given other recommendations through this video, so do whatever you want. I'm not your dad. That would be Dado, after all. Come by the stream sometime, by the way. I hit a charity incentive with Game to Give, where I'm going to have to stream several hours of Gambit wearing a cat-made outfit. No date planned for that yet, but I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Peace! <laughs>